but of course the news now just coming in that Harry Carpenter's died. Yes, it's, this is sad news for a generation of uh, sport and boxing fans uh, like myself. I say generation, I mean, what I mean is generations of people who uh, watched and listened to Harry Carpenter on the BBC covering boxing, which he did in a very long and very distinguished career from uh, when he joined all the way back in 1949. Um, the BBC announced today that he sadly passed away at the age of uh, 84. It was back in 1994 that he retired from what had been that lengthy and distinguished career, made famous really in the 80s and 90s by all the work that he did with Frank Bruno. It was almost Frank Bruno, British boxing hope and Harry Carpenter go after Mike Tyson and all the heavyweights. Um, and he was made famous by Frank Bruno, who eventually became the world heavyweight champion, saying, to him after all those many interviews at the side of the ring, know what I mean Harry, uh, and that was the, the catchphrase by which he was known and loved. Uh, the boxing promoter Frank Warren is uh, on the line to us uh, this afternoon. Um, Frank, a very good afternoon to you, and, and this is very sad news because this man was the voice of boxing, wasn't he, during the 70s, 80s and 90s? He was, uh, on BBC TV as you say, he was, uh, he was the man, and also done radio, but he was uh you know, very, very well were expected. I think him and Reg Guthridge had a sort of friendly rivalry over the, over the years. Reg passed away last year, so it's a bit of a sad time for boxing to lose lose, uh, lose Harry now. And uh, as you say, he was well loved, well well liked within the sport. And uh, as you say, the uh, you know the double act with him and Frank Bruno was uh, you know it was it was good stuff. I can remember when Bruno was fighting when Frank was fighting uh, Tyson in the States, and he got carried away, Harry, and he was <laughs> yeah. cheering Frank on. I mean, it's yeah. sort of lost it. <laughs> Very, I think it's the only time I think where he, where, um, he sort of got lost his, you want to say, professionalism. He was so carried away with it. It was, uh, it was brilliant. It's remembered well. I think the words were, I mean, the commentary was going on. As I remember, it was, it was kind of 1989. Uh, it was Bruno Tyson for, I can't remember, first or second time. And Frank just broke away from what was a very objective career as a commentator, saying, Get in there, Frank, go on! That's right. <laughs> I think it was in the first round. I think Frank, Frank caught him in the first round. It was the first fight. But it was a yeah, great moment. And, uh, and, you know, something obviously that, that anybody who's uh, been around certainly as long as I have, you know, will remember. <laughs> and presumably on the circuit, in the sport, not just in big bouts like this, but around Britain, um, Harry Carpenter was there because the impression you had was he loved this sport. Oh, he did. He was a boxing runner. I think he worked for the Daily Mail originally, but he's always been a boxing runner and he had a great affinity for it. Um, and I remember a series he'd done with Mike Tyson, uh, or, or, or a few shows he did with Mike Tyson, when they did talks about the history of boxers and all the old fighters. And that, again, was really interesting. You know, Tyson was quite a, a boxing uh, ex, you know, boxing enthusiast and a historian, and the between the two of them, I thought it was a you know, real, real entertaining program, and it showed, again, how much uh, Harry, Harry loved the sport. Frank, I'm going to see if we can have a word now with Barry McGuigan, former uh, world featherweight boxing champion uh, for Britain and uh, television commentator and boxing personality. Uh, Barry, very good afternoon to you. Hey, good afternoon to you. Um, a, a sad day today. How do you remember this uh, gentleman of television sport, Harry Carpenter? Well, he, he's, um, you know, he was a one-off and he was unique. And, and Frank mentioned Reggie Guthridge, who was also a pretty special individual. And they were friendly rivals, as Frank mentioned. But I think, you know, Carpenter was, was unique in that it's a dying breed of commentary. He'd done it on his own. He filled lots of space and he, he, uh, he was a writer for the Daily Mail and he was a, a great boxing man. He knew it back to front. He also, you know, commentated on, on Wimbledon and the boat race, etc. He was, you know, a, a fabulous professional, but he knew his boxing back to front. He was inimitable and unique in the sense that he, you know, he was a commentator on his own. He didn't share the mic with anybody. He was pretty special, and you know his style was very, very unique, very silky, silky smooth, and you know less is more sort of an attitude. And he was really, really a one-off. Uh, and tell us a bit about the kind of the, the love that emerged between uh, him, Frank Bruno, and us over this whole know what I mean, Harry quip that uh, Frank Bruno used to come up with at the end of all of those interviews. Because of course Frank never really was very comfortable and very, very good with those, and. Um, it was something that uh, we remember them for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, apart from the fact that he commentated on every one of my major fights as an amateur and a professional, um, his relationship with, with Bruno was what would be most remembered. He had a very unique relationship with him, and, and I remember when Frank, uh, uh, when Frank moved over to ATV, um, and he was being commentating, he was commentating, it was either on Sky or on ATV, he said, where's Ari? Um, it, was quite, it was quite funny. 
Um, yeah, he had a great relationship with Bruno, and it was a kind of strange relationship. He was a sort of uh, middle class or BBC commentator and, and the working class Bruno. But I mean, the, their partnership was fantastic, and, and uh, it was uh, really lovely. And, he, and they were genuine good friends as well. And I know when, when Frank was down and had his troubles, and Harry was genuinely concerned about him and, and worried about him. But um, no, it, it, it was really was funny and entertaining, and the public loved it too. And you know, we loved his relationship with. With, uh, with Bruno, it was, it was pretty special. Um, Frank Warren, he joined the BBC in 1949 and retired in 1994. That's a, that's a very long time, a very distinguished career, but a very long time to be involved and loved by one particular sport. It is. It's funny, when you think about it, you know, 1994, what's that? That's uh, 16 years ago. You don't even, you know, it seems like only yesterday uh, that you was listening to him on the, on the TV. But, um, as I say, he's left, he's left obviously left a... Uh, he's a great mark on boxing, certainly as far as commentary is concerned. You know, boxing is obviously all about the boxers, but a lot of things happen around it, and you need somebody to, you know, paint the picture and, and commentate on fights. And uh, Harry was one of the best, uh, best in the business, certainly if not one, if not the best. It's a very difficult line to tread and a very difficult act to uh, carry off, isn't it? Being objective, especially today in sport. I mean, you must have admired him and been at fights when you thought, "Cool, this is going to be a difficult one to call." It is. I mean, you know, he read a fight really well. He did read a fight well, Harry. And uh, and and as I say, you know, he he, he was very informative, and uh, and that's what what good commentators do. And uh, boxing, you know, is a very sometimes very difficult game to understand as as a commentator. And uh, and I think, as I say, he you know he was uh, he certainly he certainly made it entertaining for the public and and, and and made them enjoy the sport even more. And and in those days, you think about it, BBC were getting huge ratings for their fights. I think you know Barry's on the line. Like he commentated when Barry beat. Beat Pedroza at um, Queens Park Rangers. I think 23 million people tuned into that fight. That's a huge audience. Frank Warren, thanks for joining us. And Barry McGuigan, likewise, thanks for joining us today on a, a sad day as we mark the passing of uh, the great Harry Carpenter. OK, let's get some more on the sad news that the former boxing commentator Harry Carpenter has died at the age of 84. We can now speak to uh, Jim Watt. Very good afternoon to you, Jim. Uh, sad afternoon. news. Hi. Uh, indeed. What are your memories of Harry? Oh, well, first of all, I'm really sad to hear the news. Uh, Harry and I go way back for, for many, many years. Uh, Harry was the, you know, the, the, the boxing voice of BBC. He covered all my own world title fights. As a matter of fact, he, he commented on it as an amateur. That's how long back we go. And a, a real gentleman he was, uh, a great operator. I mean, he, he was known mostly for his commentaries on boxing, but he did various sports, golf, tennis, uh, greyhound racing, whatever he wanted to mention. Uh, Harry, Harry could do pretty much everything. I'm really sorry to hear he's gone. Do you ever, did you ever go in the, into the ring, glance out and see him down there and, 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 and get, get a lift from that? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, by then, the fact that you were boxing on television uh, w was great. It's funny, but my first memory of uh, Harry is when I was boxing in the ABA Championships, I was pre preparing to meet a fellow called Howard Hayes, who was knocking everybody out in his way up to, to, the, to, to the round we were at. And uh, I had trained for a month holding my left hand tight to my chin because we reckon this fellow must have a great right hand. And then Harry came to interview me in the dressing room just because they were going to televise the, the, my fight. And Harry said to me, I take it you know that Howard Hayes is knocking everybody out with the left hook. <laughs> so I just turned to look at my trainer and I said, well, thanks very much for that, Harry, you know. But he knew his job. I just showed you how much he knew his job. He really took everything seriously and studied everything. Did, did many in the boxing world uh, go to him? Because he was a font of knowledge, obviously. Of course, of course it was, yeah. Of course it was. But, but I'd like to stress the fact that it wasn't just boxing. You know, it was various sports. He, he was a tremendous operator. And he, and he came around at a great time. I mean, he was uh, interviewing Muhammad Ali, obviously. And then he had the double act with Frank Bruno. I remember once, uh, for some reason, Harry couldn't manage to be commentating. And it was Jim Rosenthal doing the commentaries. Big Frank won the fight, then Jim stepped into the ring, to, and the first thing Big Frank said was, where's Harry? And that became a catchphrase for years, <laughs> where's Harry? You know, he, just, he, he was part of the scene, he should have been there, and Big Frank realised that. Um, he obviously had a great love for boxing. Do, do you think he bought more than just his commentary to the sport? Do you think he bought more people interested in the sport that you love and he loved? Yeah, I, I think so. See, see, Harry was a fan as well, and that came across in his commentaries. He, he loved what he was doing, and, and, and he knew what he was talking about. 
Uh, you know, but really, you know, commentary style was different back then. It was a lot more laid back than the commentators of today. But he had a tremendous style, a tremendous knowledge, and he was a gentleman. He never really said anything really bad about anybody. He would always find something constructive to say, you know, about anybody's performance. So, so he, he was well respected and really well liked as well. Okay, sad day, Jim. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you.